Grew like two gay yeah, brothers, yeah, they're actors I can turn your girl to an actress Couple days till I had her on my mattress No, we don't play when bones get fractured 17-year-old Myron Yard was stabbed to death in South East London on Sunday the 3rd of April. A rising grime artist, also known as MDOT, he had thousands of views on YouTube and a growing fan base across the city. News of his death spread quickly and countless people mourned the loss of this well-loved young man full of potential. At the Woodpecker Estate in New Cross where Myron grew up, those who knew him were both shocked and devastated by his death. He was the future. I always said he was the future of his era. Future, literally. Yeah. King like, of rap. Everyone's King upset. of rap. What kind of guy was he? If somebody who doesn't know him, how would you describe him? Like mur murders have happened here in the past, but it's been people that has been gang related. Myron wasn't in no gang, so that's why it's such a shock. He tried to stay out of trouble. Like he's so much more than what people have said. All the good things, but more. We don't talk to the press, but we're, you know what I'm saying, to, to be honest with you, this is one of them days where I feel like we have to say something for M Dot yeah, on his behalf you know because saying? we've known him. I've seen him be small to go taller than me. You know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's sad, and he needs to be portrayed in the right light because this was a good boy. Do you feel like sometimes when things like this happen that they're not portrayed in the right light? Always. Come on, this is South London. Someone gets stabbed in South London, or someone dies in South London. It's the same thing. Jordan told me that he had recorded a lot of Myron's music and invited me to the JMP studio in Peckham to see where they spent time together. OK, this is Aaron. This is, this is Myron's brother. Hi, uh, Aaron. Uh, Upstairs in the studio, Aaron spoke to me about what had happened to his brother. A week before, we had, like, a little argument. So I haven't spoke, I ain't seen him for, like, two weeks now. And my sister's phone, my phone, and she's told me that Myron's been stabbed and they're going to King's College Hospital. I'm there thinking that I'm going to the hospital to go and see him to see if he's all right. But then I got to the hospital and then my, I just got outside to see my sister. And then she was like, he's dead. And plus, I lost my mum two years ago as well. Yeah, so it's just, it's mad. But I just have to be there for my sisters and my kids. Uh, it must be really difficult for you and your siblings. Yeah. I was just wondering if like, it was sh a shock that someone got stabbed there or if it has happened before. It's not a shock, really. In that woodpecker state, yeah, a lot of people have been dying there, but, but it's a shock because it's my little brother. And that's why it's a shock, because I'm supposed to be protecting him. You know that I know how to make a meal. You know that I know how to get a deal. This is really how you make a meal. This is really how you get a deal. I just showed you how to make a meal. I just showed you how to get a deal. And every day we're getting in the meal. This is the beginning stages of what we started the other day, just Friday. Come on. My room was here on Friday. Yeah. This is the last song he's recorded. He ever recorded. So, so upsetting with him because he was doing the right thing. He was trying to push his music. All he wanted to do was make his mum proud and he took it to the next level when his mum passed. Very often it seems to be that music, especially this genre of music, mm -hmm. seems to be something that is common for like across the board. Why do you think that it's yeah. so popular? It is music, but this is an aura, an energy of not just our borough, every borough. Every borough feels this way. Like poor Myra, he's not in a gang, he just makes music. I find it interesting that you use the word gangs, yeah, I didn't use it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not in El Salvador, we're not in like a place where you get like MS-13 no, tattooed no. on your face or no, like no, some no. marks on you. Like what does it mean in London to be part of a gang? It's like football teams, you're red, we're blue, Man United versus this person. Everybody is just caught up in some spell, I can't explain to you, it's not, it's not something that really exist. You've got everyone living in the most cramped place, buildings built upon buildings where everybody's out here broke, living the same. You're going to end up on the streets, your mum has to go to work, your dad has to go to work. What do you do in your hours when you're on your own? You're outside with your friends, chilling with your friends. There's 10 of you which are friends with all the same situation. Are you a gang? In 2013, seven teenagers were stabbed to death in London the same number in 2014. But deadly attacks spiked in 2015 when 19 teenagers were murdered, 15 of those as a result of knife crime. 
Before he died, Myron had been fundraising for the funeral of his friend, Jamal Walker, who had been stabbed to death in Birmingham. Inspired by Myron's fundraising, 17-year-old Jay set up his own GoFundMe page to raise money for Myron's family. 749 people have donated um, in the last two days, uh, giving us a total of £12,014. That's amazing. That's really good. And so what are you going to do with all of the money you've raised for him? To foot the bill for not just emotionally, but, you know, um, physically and, 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 and have to have to pay for all his funeral and things. I just thought it's unfair for them to carry the burden alone when so many people cared about him. He never came from the best background. He never had, you know, the, the, the two parents and the, and the comfy house somewhere and only God knows that. But he had a lot of enthusiasm to what he was doing and he wouldn't let anything stop him from his music or anything else like that. From what you hear, mm. what is it that people are usually fighting about? A lot of young people I know don't feel safe without, you know, carrying something or, or, or being a part of these things like gangs and stuff like that. Like what, um, what, could you just explain that to me? Like, what, um, how do you feel that young people don't feel safe? They feel like if I don't carry it, what something happens to me and somebody else has one and I don't. So I think it's always been that fight or flight instinct and now it's gotten to a point where we don't just fight anymore. A lot of young people fight with knives and fight with things that take people's lives. Do you feel like young voices get heard? I've seen so much done for young people, but I've never seen it done alongside young people or done by young people. I say this a lot, like, we're, we're, um, we're controlled by politicians who don't know us. Emergency cases across South London end up at the major trauma centre at King's College Hospital. Consultant surgeon Mr Duncan Bew has many years of experience on the front line in the battle to save the lives of victims of knife crime. How frequently are you dealing with cases of knife crime? So we, we deal with this every day. Research has shown that we have had increases in attendance around the closing times of schools, at certain times of the year and around certain other events. We've certainly seen a rise recently in the numbers of penetrating injuries that we've had and also the significance of the ferocity of the attacks and the types of attacks that we're seeing that are far more devastating. In your work here as a surgeon and the work that you do with other organisations, what have you learnt and what do you think is going to work? I think what really will work is by understanding the mindset of the children who are involved in the violence. I think the young people do always have a disproportionate sense of their own immortality. Um, and then when sometimes they're confronted with something as devastating that will be either very life-changing or life-threatening to them, it comes as a massive shock. Do you feel that knife crime is taken seriously enough and do you think it's given enough attention? There has been a concerning sense of normalisation around violence um, within communities as well as in the media. This sense of normalisation of some of the violence is something that also the children feel and actually breeds an awful lot of fear actually amongst them and actually in a way drives their willingness to want to carry weapons in that false sense of security they have from thinking they're protected and carrying a weapon. Uh, and I think that fear really is a significant factor in that cycle of crime. The stabbing of someone like Myron, who was not involved in gang violence, can only increase the culture of fear among young people in the capital. Whilst many would see the police as their first point of call to ensure their safety, that's not always the case. If you've been assaulted by police in the past, you're not really going to, like me, to be honest, I've been assaulted by police. They battered me. Do you think I'm going to, do you think I'm going to run for them for safety? You know what I mean? So People speak to people they trust, people they lo that love them. No one knows an officer or a badge or who's their family who loves them. And she called me and she was questioning why her birthday was on her dad's tombstone. She was like realizing for the first time that her dad passed away on her birthday. 